Father, we thank you for reigning in our lives, for being the one who will always have the last word in every area of our lives. We want to hear from you, especially in these trying times, in these times of uncertainty. We need to hear from you. Speak to us now. Speak through your servant. Think with my mind and speak with my vocal cords so that you can bring glory to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to share with you for a brief moment on the subject of hearing God in the foggy places. Hearing God in the foggy places of your life. Every one of us, and perhaps some of you can confess that now, that you are going through a foggy place in your life. If it's not now, you have been through one, and perhaps may be going through one in the future. It was on this past Wednesday, I laid the foundation for today's message. I talked about walking through the dark places of your life on Wednesday, how it can be difficult, it can be challenging, but you have to walk through it. And how do you walk through those dark places? You believe in yourself, you believe in the strength that God has placed in you, that you can do all things through Christ who give you the strength and that you focus on him, not on the darkness, not on the things that are trying to capture your attention. I shared with you the things you need to do to accomplish having the ability to walk through the dark places. And while you're walking through the dark places, things can become a little bit foggy for a moment. You're not able to see. As a driver, there are times I'm traveling, and depending on what region, uh, there can be foggy moments. Moments where there's thick fog. You can't see your way through. Even here in South Florida, there are times you can't see your way through, and you have to drive with caution. It's the same thing. Sometimes you have to live your life believing and trusting God that you're going to get through it. But for you to walk through the dark places of your life, you must be able to hear God. If there's one thing you need right now is when you're going through the foggy places of your life, is that you must have the ability to hear God and hear Him clearly. Hear Him not guessing, I wonder if that's God. I, I, wonder, I wonder, am I making the right decision? No, at this season of your life, you need to be absolutely sure that God spoke to you. Because he's speaking, you know. God is speaking and there's a way for us to hear him. And I don't want you to become like these people that we see a lot on social media and all over the place prophesying all kinds of stuff that they never really heard from God. You want to be absolutely sure when you open your mouth and you say, God told me this, God told me that, that you want to make sure you've heard his voice because he cannot lie. He cannot lie. You see, it is your only chance to avoid huge mistakes and irreparable damages in your life when you hear his voice, God laid it on my heart to revisit this subject of hearing his voice because I've taught on it before. You see, hearing from God is critical to making the best decisions in all areas of your life, especially when you are a Christian. When you are a believer, and you've turned your life over to Jesus Christ, it is critical that you hear from God. You can no longer live 
you know, in a way that you're just hoping, you're living, maybe guessing. There's no need for guessing as a believer. You need to absolutely be sure that God spoke to you. And when he spoke to you, you can declare that without any reservation. Hearing from God is critical. I want that to settle in your spirit. Hearing from God is critical. Listen to me. You are at a juncture in your life. You need to hear from God. There are some decisions you feel like making. You need to hear from God. You want to be absolutely sure that God told you to make those decisions. John 10 verse 27 tells us, my sheep, that's God speaking, hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. That's important. My sheep, what is he talking about? Those who are led by him, those who belong to him, those who consider him as the great shepherd, he says, they hear my voice. So that's telling us that, that we as Christians by virtue of our position in God, be, being his sheep, that we have the ability to hear God's voice. That he's not in malice with us. He's not talking to some people. And in turn, he's not talking to us. It says, my sheep, we belong to him. I believe you belong to him. They hear my voice. And then here's the thing. It's one thing for us to claim that we know him. But the question is, you know, it, it, it's all about God. He says here, I know them. So we want to, 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 to be able to say we hear God's voice, but at the same time, we want to make sure that he is also hearing us and recognizing who we are. And then he says, and they follow me. Because you can hear the voice of God, but the real question is, are you willing to follow him? I think all of us have been guilty of that. We have heard his voice, but we don't really follow through with his instructions. And somebody ought to type amen. I mean, if you're in agreement, because this message is good, somebody need to hear this message. And I encourage you to share it. Because so many times we, we go after hearing God's voice and there's no doubt we're hearing his voice, but so many times we flunk the, the test of, are we willing to follow him? I wonder how many of you watching right now can honestly say, you heard God spoke to you. you. You can remember the date, the time, the hour, the season. He spoke to you about doing specific things, but unfortunately you didn't follow him. Hello, you didn't follow him. Don't leave me out here hanging by myself. You didn't follow him. I wonder what areas of your life you did not follow God. I wonder. I, I wonder, Diane. I, I, I wonder, Aladia, Alada. I, I wonder, um, Mary. I, I, I wonder, Carline. I, I, I wonder. I, I'm really wondering, Wanda, what areas of your life, Nicole, have you heard God? You know God spoke to you, but for whatever reason, Gloria, you, uh, you just didn't follow him. Perhaps he told you, now's the time to pray, and you didn't, and it was a missed opportunity. Perhaps you asked God to give you wisdom in making a financial decision, but you heard him, but you didn't follow through with that. Right? And I see many of you are posting your responses. You know, uh, we're, we're all, we've, we've all been guilty of that. We've heard God's voice, but the struggle is, can we follow his instructions? So let's face it, a greater percentage of the mistakes we make derived from our inability to definitively hear God's voice. We're struggling so many people you're watching, you're struggling to hear God's voice. Oh, you're hearing a lot of voices. You're hearing the voices of your friends. You're hearing the voices of your, your group. 
you know, the people you associate with. You're hearing the voice of social media because social media does have a voice. I mean, and a loud voice at that. Facebook, I mean, that's a strong voice. Instagram, Twitter. There's a new one called, what's it called? TikTok. A, a new voice. And many of us are listening to those voices. You're listening to even your own voice. But are you listening to the voice of God? Isaiah 30 verse 21, it says, And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. Notice, and your ears will hear a voice behind you. And your ears will hear a voice behind you. Mickey, would you come here for a second? All right. Your ears will hear a voice behind you. I want to demonstrate this because this is the struggle for most of us. This is the struggle for most of us. Just stay right there. This is the struggle for most of us. Mickey is representing all of us. This is us. This is us, all right? And we're in our pursuit of things in life, whatever those things are. We're, we're focus driven. We're looking to the hills from whence cometh our help. We, 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 we are, we're, our eyes are fixed on the promises of God. And there's no doubt about it. I believe that with all of my heart. And we're praying for direction. We're praying for God to guide us and, and, and just lead us. And, and we're praying, we're saying to God, order my steps in your word. We're crying out to God for that. God, give me wisdom. Help me to make good uh, personal decisions. You know, God, what career path I should take? Uh, uh, should I switch from this job to the next? Should I switch career? Should I switch, you know, companies? Maybe, maybe you want to make a decision and switch in a company. Maybe you want to switch to another mortgage company. Or whatever decisions you're making, perhaps you're seeking God for wisdom when it comes to dating somebody, you know, and maybe there's somebody right now before you and you're, you're, you're struggling should I date that person or, 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 or should I open myself to dating? Maybe you're in a marriage right now and you're contemplating separation and divorce and, or maybe the marriage is not going so well. Maybe you're even planning, should I have kids or should I not have kids or whatever it may be. Should I buy? Should I go get a mortgage? Should I, whatever it may be. Should I pay my debts off? All of us are having questions that we're seeking answers. And what I love about this passage of scripture is the Bible says your ears shall hear a word. Listen, there's no doubt about it. Mickey is in front of me right now. He represents all of us and God's voice is speaking as much as I'm speaking right now. And I will guarantee you Nikki's ears are hearing me. He's hearing me. And I got to tell you, there are times we may be looking for God to come directly in front of us and tell us what he wants us to hear. And can I just say to you, that's not how it's going to be all the time. It's not going to be like this. Sometimes you've got to trust God and trust your instinct. And let God guide you because sometimes he is going to speak and what you're going to hear, watch this, it's a word that's behind you. Go, Nikki, or Mickey. Go, Mickey. Go, Sandra. Go, John. Go, Beverly. Go, Wanda. And notice, I didn't even ask Mickey to move. He wasn't a part of it. But he heard his name and he started moving. But I don't know why he stopped. I have no idea why he stopped. You see, the uncertainty of the voice we're hearing. I gave him an instruction. He started following the instruction, but he stopped. I wonder how many of you have heard the voice of God and you started obeying his voice, but for whatever reason, you just stopped. No wonder you have, it's so much missed opportunities because God's voice is speaking behind you, the scripture says, 
And he says, this is the way to go walk in it. And I gave Mickey an instruction and he was walking in it, but he did run well, but who hindered him? I was still speaking, but, but he was battling in his mind. I don't know what he's up to. I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't know what he's trying to say. But, but notice, I gave him one instruction and that was, go Mickey. I wonder how many of you, God told you, do it. But you're still doubting. Thank you, Mickey. You're still doubting him. Are you hearing me? When God says to you, turn to the right, turn to the left. When God gives you a specific word, a specific word. I don't know who this word is for today, but there are many of you. I see your names. I see your comments. Many of you right now, God has given you a specific word, Debbie. God has given you a specific word, Pamela. God has given you a specific word, Tina. He has given you a specific word. The question is, are you going to follow him? Because he's speaking, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they will follow me. So let me say it again. Hearing from God in the foggy places of your life is critical to you making the best choices in all areas of your life. It is very unfortunate that so many people are allowing other people their emotions, trends, social media, and other things to influence their decisions. It's unfortunate that instead of hearing God's voice, people are allowing other people to speak into their ears, people who are not spirit-led, people who have no relationship with God, people who are driven by their emotions and by your own emotions, the trend of our society, if you're not careful, you, you, you are forced to blend in with what's popular. If you're not careful, social media now can redirect your life because a lot of people want to become a part of what's been promoted on social media, the images, you know. We even want to change ourselves to look like social media. We even put out even some intimate, private parts of our lives on social media. And, and we're, we're, we're seeking for attention, and that's true. We're all seeking for attention. We're all seeking for attention. A lot of people, I'm not saying most people, but a lot of people on social media, they are projecting a certain uh, 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 qualities and certain things about themselves. That's not real. It's not real. You don't have to promote your love. <laughs> you don't have to promote that you're rich. You know, to promote that you, I've discovered that rich people don't brag about their money. Confident people don't brag about their confidence. They let you talk about it. So this is so very dangerous because these sources that I just mentioned can be misleading and create unnecessary setbacks and failures. When you look to the trend in our society, other people, your emotions, social media and other things to influence your decisions, it's going to lead to unnecessary setbacks because you're not hearing God's voice. It will lead to a lot of failures in your life because you're not hearing God's voice. Remember John 10, 27, I read it before, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. I know them. And God wants to say some things to you. In fact, he's speaking. The question is, are you listening? And when you're going through a foggy season in your life, you must have clarity about what to do and what to say, or else anxiety will overpower you. You need clarity. Somebody just need to cry out to God and say, God, I need clarity. I just need clarity, man. I need to hear from you. He's speaking, but I, I'm the one that's got a problem. I need clarity. I need to hear from God. I was driving in the car with my youngest son recently and 
We were driving. I had no idea that he had those two earbuds in his ears. I had no idea that he had them in there. And I think it's the, um, the Apple ones. And they're good with sound proof. The AirPods, right, the AirPods. Um, and, and what's they call the Apple ones? The, the sound reduction of, yes, they just, just knock out the sounds completely. And um, I'm sitting there and I had no idea he was listening to music. And I'm talking to my son. I'm having a deep conversation with Elijah. I mean, even looked at him and he looked like he was responding in a sense, hearing everything. And I'm in the car with him talking until finally when I asked him a question and I didn't really get a, respond, a response from him, I said, did you hear what I said? And, and all of a sudden he went like this, excuse me? I think that's how some of us are with God. God's talking to us, but we've got these, air, what do you call them? AirPods. I call them earplugs. <laughs> AirPods in our ears. And we're doing our business. We're living our lives. And God's talking to us. And it's only when our back is against the wall that we're confronted with an issue that we have to like, excuse me, God, because we haven't been listening. Here's the difference. Like my son, I had the opportunity to repeat the question and thank God he was able to hear it. I wonder how many of you will be kind enough and be, be open enough to unplug your ears and hear God so you don't miss your uncommon opportunities for the rest of the year. Not only, not only will anxiety overpower you when, when you can't hear God in the foggy places, but you will be stressed and at times make impulsive decisions that may take you years to recover. I can't tell you how many of you are watching right now. You have made some decisions that it's taken years for you to recover from those decisions because you did not hear God. You see, this is the area that God has developed me personally in. I can honestly say that I recognize God's voice during difficult times, during difficult seasons. I can recognize the voice of God during challenging times Somehow, all of my years of experience, I learned to listen to God when I am going through a foggy place. Because if you're like me, you, when you reach a certain age, it's kind of too late to recover certain losses. And I'm speaking directly to some people now. That you don't have the privilege like some of these millennials to restart or, or to recover bad mistakes that you will make today. Yes, I know God is a God of second chances and so forth, but why, why not get it right the first time if you're listening to God? You see, in the foggy places of your faith journey, I believe that you can make wise decisions when you learn to listen to the voice of God. Because you see, for me, I pray for wisdom. I, I seek advice from other people who, who have made similar decisions, who, are, who have passed through similar fog, foggy places and so forth, so that I too can make the best decisions in my own life. And you see, some of you, unfortunately, I hate to be the bearer of this news, some of you are hanging out with people who have no evidence that they are overcomers themselves. 
You see, you, you, you can't hang out with people who have no proven record of overcoming life's challenges because if you hang out with those people, I'm telling you, you're not going to get anywhere. You've got to seek for people who will give you sound advice, even advice sometimes you don't want to hear. People who will look you straight in the eye, love you anyway, and say, you know what? No, 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 no. This is the direction you need to go. Why? Because we've been there, done that. We're experts in this. We have our own testimonies about hearing the voice of God. So many believers and also the unchurched make decisions in areas of their lives without knowing for sure if God has spoken. Many of you are at a dark place right now in your life and some of you are in those foggy places and you are going to have to figure out a way to hear from God so that you can make it through the foggy places, those uncertain paths. You see, to hear God in the foggy places will require you to do the following four things. Number one, you have to create an atmosphere for God to be with you throughout the process. You've got to create an atmosphere for God to be with you throughout the process. You see, this is done through prayer. You got to learn to pray. You got to learn to meditate on the scriptures. You got to worship and also allow worship to tutor you. That's what you're doing right now today. This worship service, this virtual worship service, it's tutoring you. You participated in the worship. You participated in the offering. You participated when we were giving out scholarships. You participated when, um, when we were having communion. Now you're participating in the word. This, my friends, it's tutoring you all throughout the service this morning. You've been hearing God's voice because you've created the atmosphere. You logged on. You, you responded to the notification you received on social media that, hey, we're having service. You see, to hear God's voice, that's the first thing you have to do. You have to cultivate an environment, right? You got to create that environment to hear God's voice. So, so what you've heard today, this message you've heard today, certainly it's going to help you this week and years to come to get through those foggy places of your life. Number two. You have to renew your mind. It's the renewing of your mind. To get through the foggy places, you've got to renew your mind. This means, first of all, daily deleting self-serving and ignorant thoughts from your mind and fill it with the Word of God. I want to say that again. Daily deleting self-serving and ignorant thoughts from your mind and fill it with the Word of God. So many people can't hear the voice of God. Why? Because they have self-serving and ignorant thoughts. I don't know about you, man, but there are times I listen to some people and I just can't respond because if I respond, I'm going to have to go to the altar and repent. Because you just look at them and you just have to just shake your head. I mean, just, just, just by their self-serving attitude. But there are people who, 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 it makes you wonder, what are you thinking? Silly thoughts, crazy thoughts. Thoughts just make you just throw your hands up and say, I'm done. I thought I heard the worst. <laughs> Think about that. And that's frustrating for me as a leader. It's frustrating. I know, you know, it may not be for you, but, but I know I'm speaking on the behalf of some of you. There are just times you just listen to people, man, and you just have to just hold your head down and like, you know, wonder. What in the world are they thinking? Hebrews 2 verse 1 says, Therefore we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. The word the word, the word, let the word, let the word guide us. Take heed to the word of God. Lest at any time we will slip because many times the reason why we slip, meaning we trip up and make huge mistakes in our lives is because we're not taking heed to the word of God. Number three, this is very important. We need to find that quiet 
place. I love this. We need to find that quiet place. Listen, while you're going through the foggy places of your life, man, there's some places you're going to walk through. You can't see a thing. You can't comprehend. You can't understand what God is trying to do to you. I mean, it is just foggy. You can't see nothing. But as long as you can hear him, you got to learn to find that quiet place. Sometimes our problem is we just talk too much. Can I just be honest and kind of up in your face and hopefully you don't get mad with me and so forth because I love you and I hope you understand my heart. But sometimes I think we just need to shut up. Shut up. Zip it. Be quiet. Shh. Not another word out of your mouth. Just shut up. Get to that quiet place. Well, you don't understand what's coming against me. This one fighting against me. This one, just, just be still. Know that God is God. Find that quiet place. This is a place where you train yourself to be still. You force yourself. It's a place where you don't respond to people or to things that are attacking you. You don't respond to them. You don't respond to the attacks. Just, okay, my God is with me. Just be still. And I know that's the most difficult thing to do because we, 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 by human nature, we got to defend ourselves and we got to speak up. And No, 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 sometimes just be still. Psalm 85 verse 8 says, Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Help us, God, that while we're going through the foggy places of our lives, we don't fall back to foolish things. Foolish things. That we don't get all bent out of shape and angry and ticked off that we got to... Ugh. No. Be still. That's the... Whew. I, 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 I'm, I'm just speaking on the behalf of real people. That's hard. Especially if you're a high energy person like me. It's hard, man. It's hard. Sometimes I have to give God the permission because he's not going to do it unless I give him the permission. Sometimes I have to give God the permission. Strap me down. Handcuff me. Take me down. Because as humans, we want to respond. But find that quiet place where You're not hearing the distractions anymore. A place where you shut out every negativity. That quiet place may be in your bedroom. You close the door and you say to your kids, nobody disturb me. That quiet place could be in your office. That quiet place could be in a room in the house. That quiet place could be when you pull up to your job and you sit in your car. And you know you're about to enter into a lion's den. But you sit in the car for a few moments and you let the peace of God that surpass it, all human understanding, take full control over you. That quiet place when the mortgage is due, the rent is due, the car note is due. Every bill you can think of is overdue. And 
the check you're about to receive this week is not enough. That quiet place that says, my hope is built to nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I don't trust anything else around me. I trust in him and him alone that he's going to bail me out. Find that quiet place. And finally, number four, be patient and don't let your feelings and anxiety influence your decisions. Be patient and don't let your feelings and anxiety influence your decisions. Don't let your feelings speak for God. Don't let the way you feel, oh, I think God just spoke to me. Just because, just because you feel it's the right thing to do don't mean it's God. Don't let your feelings. Do you know how many people feel as if, yeah, man, I love the dude. I love the chick. I love her. But it was their feelings. Now they recognize that wasn't God. Oh, I felt God wanted me to buy this, purchase those items. Now they recognize, you know what? It wasn't God. Oh, God told me to leave the job. Well, now you're figuring out. It wasn't God who told you to leave the job. It was your feelings. Your emotions got in the way. And anxiety set in. And many of us, when we're going through our foggy places, when anxiety sets in, we can't see and we panic. And then that's how we make dumb decisions. So if you're walking through a foggy place this morning in your life, a place where, you're on, where you are unable to see clearly, I want you to make wise decisions. I want you to hear God. Because he says, my sheep, they hear my voice. They hear my voice. Can you hear him? Are you listening to him? Can you hear him? Can you, can you put aside how you feel? Can you put aside what you've heard? Can you put aside your past? Can you put aside for a moment your negative feelings? Can you break generational curses over your life for a moment and for, for once in your life begin to hear God for yourself and not through the instrument of somebody else? Can you hear him? Oh, Henry, it's foggy. <laughs> What does hearing got to do with seeing? Last time I checked, the Bible didn't say you have to see things to believe it. My seeing or my inability to see should not prevent me from hearing God. He's speaking. Father, thank you for this word that we've heard today. We are your sheep. And we know you're speaking to us. We just need the wisdom to hear you. Let us hear you, God. Let us hear you. There are so many things you are given and you're releasing in the atmosphere. There's so many things you have already spoken. And through the work of the Holy Spirit, you're speaking to us. You're telling us some things right now. Even during this sermon, you've been telling us some things. Let us hear you. Somebody watching is about to make a decision. Somebody was forced and was confused and was pulled into a different direction. And through this message, you spoke to them loud and clear. Help them to respond correctly. Help them to hear you. Thank you that they're hearing you now. 
I thank you that for those who have yet to respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit that says, turn your life over to God, that they'll do it even now. I pray for those who won't live up to the word of God, that Father, all of us will hear you and daily make every effort to do so. Thank you for this word today. In Jesus' name, if you're not a Christian, I want you to confess these words with me now. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. I embrace the free gift of salvation and today I declare that I'm born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family of God. If you prayed that prayer, I'd love to give you this book absolutely free, beginning your walk with Christ. It's yours for the asking. Just go to our website, click on the salvation link, request it, and we'll send it out to you absolutely free. What a worship service today. We were able to partake of communion. We were able to hear a relevant word from the Lord. I would encourage you, if you logged on um, just a few minutes ago and you did not get to hear the appeal for the offering, I'm going to encourage you to sow your seed now into the kingdom of God. While the worship team is going to come to lead us out, I want you to use the information on your screen. Please call them with your debit or credit card. Help us. At the end of the day, no matter what you think about giving to church, it takes money to do this. And if you are a believer, you read the word, I'm quite sure God is speaking. The question is, are you listening to him? Because you see, the, the, the sooner you release the seed, it's the quicker you get your blessing. That's the word. Don't, don't hold up your blessings because you're procrastinating in the area of giving. Give unto God. Use all the digital platforms on your screen now and worship the Lord in your givings. The Lord bless you. Thanks for making this day so great. This is Henry Fernandez saying to you, faith in your God will move mountains out of your life. God bless you. Hey everyone, this is Henry Fernandez and I want to thank you so much for watching this video, my friends. And I want you to subscribe to my channel and my friends, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Hit the notification bell so that you'll be the first to get my notice of my videos that I'm sending out on a daily basis. And please, I want you to follow me on all of my social media platforms. And remember, you can connect with me on my website, henryfernandez.org or the faithcenterint.org. My friends, faith in your God will always move mountains out of your life.